how can we determine whether a transformation is linear or not? Well, if the transformation is from Rn to Rm, we can try to find a matrix which implements the transformation. But if you have a transformation from V to W, where V and W are some other general vector spaces, then the transformation will not be implemented anymore by a matrix, so that method will not help us. Well, in order to establish whether a transformation is linear, we have only one option, use the definition and see whether the properties are satisfied. That sounds awful. In practice, it's not so bad, as we will see in this video. Suppose we have our linear transformation going from P1 to P2, given by the image of P equals 2 plus T times the polynomial. So what happens, for example, to the polynomial uh, from P1 minus 3 plus 5T, how do we get the image? Well, easy, you multiply by 2 plus T. So what happens, you have to work out the brackets, you get the minus 6 plus 10T minus 3T, plus 5t squared, and then we are over here, and then combine the uh, 10t and the minus 3t to a plus 7t. So that's how this transformation works. But is it linear or not? Well, we have only one option, use the definition, see whether the t of u plus v equals the t of u plus the t of v, and t of the c times u is that equal to c times the t of u. So take two arbitrary polynomials, p1 and p2, I compute the t of p1, compute the t of p2, and compute the t of the sum. Now, there we go. The t of p1 equals 2 plus t times p1. Work out the brackets. We get the 2 times a1, uh, uh, 2 times b1t over here. We get the a1 times t over there. And b1 times uh, uh, t times t, b1 times t squared. There we go. And we do the same for the other one. The image of P2, well, it's of course exactly the same, but now with the uh, ones replaced by twos. So there we have the T of P2. Okay, now we have to compute the image of P1 plus P2. Wow, that's quite a lengthy expression. So we plug in P1 and P2, P1 plus P2, and then we compute the image. Well, what did, ha did we have to do? We had to, have to, had to multiply by 2 plus T. So we multiply this long expression here by 2 plus t. So what do we get? Uh, 2 times a1 over here, uh, 2 times b1 times t over here, uh, 2 times a2 over there, and uh, 2 times b2t over there. So there we are. 2 is done. Then we continue with the t. Uh, t times a1 over there, uh, t times b1 times t over there, t times a2 over here, and a t times p2t over there. So, there we go. And now we first put all terms with uh, the 1s, and then we put all terms with the 2s. So we have a 2 times a1 there, a 2b1t, and here an a1t over there, and uh, then we have a b1t squared over here, and we do the same with the, a with the term with the 2s. And then we see, hey, but this term here is just the t of p1, which we have over here, and the second part is the t of p2. So that uh, property is satisfied. We still have to check the second one. So what is the t of c times p1? Well, fortunately, that's a bit easier. c times p1 is just c times a1 plus b1 times t equals c times a1 plus c times p1 times t. So we have to multiply this, pr uh, this quantity here by 2 plus t, as we do over there. So what do we get? Uh, 2 times c times a1, uh, 2 times c times b1t over there, and then you do the t's t times c times a1 over there, and then t times c times b1t over there. And then you see you have c's everywhere, so you can take the c in front, that's what we do over there, and you see what's between the brackets is it exactly again the t of p1, so we get the c times the t of p1, so both properties of linear, linearity are satisfied, which means that our transformation t is linear.